Hi guys, uh, Ben here, just uh, making a quick tutorial. I was actually on Reddit and uh, I was in a thread on pre 3D printed terrain uh, and had a question from the Howler Monkey on uh, Prusa slices. Now uh, they're using an Ender 3, I'm using a Prusa i3 Mark 3S, well, and just the Mark 3. Um, but the settings are pretty universal as far as tiles are concerned. Um, so I actually have imported a few uh, tiles into uh, into a Prusa Slicer. It's a Prusa Slicer uh, 2.1. Um, there's a new update coming out soon. Um, so yeah, you don't need to have a Prusa for this to work. Uh, I usually print at 150 microns quality. I think it's a good balance between detail and speed. And I, uh, I just have some higher detailed items. Now, with a lot of the open lock tiles, and this would apply to like dragon lock and additional tile systems, uh, you, you have these bases that you don't really want a super amount of detail in. You want them to print quick, you want the prints to stick. So having uh, a thicker base is always good. So Prusa Slice has this nice feature called height ranges. Uh, so if you click this button, you get this bar on the side and what this bar actually does it has details of the controls here um, but essentially you decide how detailed a, a model will be and it will change the height and thickness of the filament um, so what we want, since we have a base here with no details, is we want to right click down the bottom here, and you can see it's going sort of red, and this will decrease the detail on the base of the item. And then we want to, from here on out, click the, the uh, left side, and you can see that it's green, and we're going to pick up some great detail there on the side. Now th this is slightly buggy, um, I've noticed so that uh, if you move things around a little bit and go back it, sometimes it resets um, so it can be a slight pain in the ass to get working correctly uh, I don't know if I'm doing something slightly wrong here but um, if we redo this let's see there and we click slice now what you should see, uh, it hasn't worked yet, what you should see, I find if you move something around and go back to it, see it's not saving everything for some reason. Let's see. And then we want to slice now. You can see here that the base layers are a lot thicker and then a lot finer compared to the other ones the further up we go. So that's a good way to, to sort of like uh, find a compromise there. Uh, then you also have a few few choices for supports here. Um, you have... Uh, I want to go out of that mode. Uh, you have supports here. You can choose support on build plate for support enforcers only or everywhere so if you support on build plate only uh, what it's going to do is when you go to the uh, slice now it's going to create a bunch of supports you can see it thinking that's because it's calculating the supports here um, and it's going to just calculate what is necessary from the base of the models to support it so essentially it's just overhangs and these have pretty good bases so it's been like okay these don't really need any supports uh, but what we also have is support enforcers now this is a nice little uh, tool where if you right click on a model and go to add support enforcer it creates a box you're gonna have to scale it down uh, let's see so it has these manipulators and we only want to really move this to the area that we want to support which is under these controls uh, 
so let's just scale it down a bit more. Uh, and this this will leave a slight mark on the on the base, but uh, it might be a nice compromise there. So that that's the only real serious overhang we have. So if we click slice now, you see that it's just created uh, the supports, but it's only there where you actually want them. Uh, and you could probably go a little bit further with this if it has a number of different formats and whatnot. Uh, you can also rotate items. For example, this control panel. Uh, you'd be better off using the rotate manipulator and can s snap it to these different cardinal points and uh, there we're not going to lose too much detail there it's a bit of a shame of it well you might have to consider this little island there now um, but in any case uh, that's what I generally do about uh, supports and detail now let's look at the, the actual settings um, so I'll just uh, reset, uh, well, we've got the bridging on that's because of the kind of supports that we're using. Um, the layer height we've already got established. First layer height, I don't usually mess with them. Um, in fact, uh, here I don't think there's too much we need to worry about. It's just if you have detect uh, bridging perimeters on that, that's good for overhangs, uh, small overhangs that you often have with tiles. Infill, I don't do uh, too much with it. I usually leave it at 15. The gyroid uh, is uh, really quite nice. Um, speed, uh, sorry, skirt and brim. Here I find the default they have skirt layers three, which means it's going to do three separate layers on the outside. So I don't. I, the best result with tiles is always to have a flat, flat bottom. Uh, so you should instead work on getting your 3D printer to lay down the best first layer it can uh, for good adhesion. But then you're going to get a really smooth bottom. And when it comes to uh, my ship miniatures, for example, they will snap together very nicely um, if, if you've got that down pat. So you'll need to look into the settings for individual printer for that to work. Um, but instead of having three layers high, because I, I notice if there are some issues, especially if you're printing many different objects on your print bed at once, it will only take one of them to fail. And if one of them lifts, you're screwed. And one of the ways that you can get a failure is if the uh, skirt loops are uh, ha have lifted off and are dragged uh, with the nozzle. So instead of doing three high, I usually lower this to one and I increase it to three. So you're going to get that nice outline that will just sort of like get your filament flowing nicely before your print starts. Um, but it's most likely not going to get in the way later. Uh, I leave the other settings empty and then I go to uh, the uh, support material. Um, the only thing I really usually change is if you've got auto, you might have to consider things. Right now we set this up so that we have the... Uh, the uh, the enforcers in place. Uh, so forget about the enforcers. We're going to um, for now um, the overhang threshold. I would actually bring down way down to maybe like thirty five percent or something like that. Prusa slicer uh, manages overhangs quite well, um, but uh, I don't know how that would react on a non Prusa printer. So um, you might have to fiddle with that setting a little bit to see what you like. And basically it will show you on the automatic supports. You'll see that there'll be more or less depending on how, how many overhangs there are. Um, let's see. Then uh, we have speed. Now speed is somewhere where I tend to make some sacrifices depending on how small the details are. I might sink down small perimeters to 15 and uh, the uh, but but that's generally the only thing you usually have to change from the default but it depends how uh, difficult it's being um, so we have 20 for the first layer it's usually a good setting but yeah if you need to slow it down even more you could also do it manually uh, multiple extruders doesn't apply to us. I only have a single extruder. Advanced. Now this is a nice little section here. 
with the extrusion width. Now, I found that uh, some details don't always come out. So if we actually go back, uh, let's see, I need to import something that's got, uh, well, actually, let's look at the fine detail on these again. Um, so we're getting pretty decent detail there. You can see most of these control panels coming out. Um, but uh, I do have a few that can be problematic. So why don't we just import in, uh, let's see, we can go Chimera base ship, interior walls, and then I think the doorway here can be a bit of a pain in the butt sometimes. This has some floating objects that if uh, you can see here, like there's these symbols attached um, to the uh, to the wall there. And uh, if we click slice now, uh, you see, for example, that we lose some detail on the symbols. And uh, this can apply to uh, the walls as well at times. So what we can actually do is go into the print settings in advanced and the external perimeters, we can change this to 0 0.42. And uh, now when we slice again, it's going to take a little bit of time, but you should see some increased detail and we've gotten back these lines there. So this is a good way to just sort of pick up and add a little bit more detail. And you'll notice that things like the keys, uh, very fine details are actually picked up and increased somewhat. So, um, yeah, I think, let's see, is that the last of them? This is the last of the settings that I would normally go through. Uh, the only other thing I consider is the filament settings. Now, depending on your room temperature and uh, humidity and the time of year, the, the ambient temperature, you might want to increase these by five degrees. I live in Sweden. Um, and uh, depending on whether it's in the summer, I can print with these settings in the winter because uh, the ambient temperature is obviously a bit colder and my office is uh, not that well uh, heated. Um, I usually have to jack these up. The bed's as high as 70 on, on some of my printers, and I usually just put 5 degrees more on the temperature of the filament. Obviously, this can vary by filament, your printer, your ambient temperature, but it's something to mess with because it definitely affects how well the first layer sticks, and as I mentioned, that's probably the most important thing when it comes to printable terrain uh, and miniatures. So that is... Just a short tutorial, I hope it's helpful to some people. Uh, I still consider myself quite an amateur. Oh, I'm in expert mode, by the way, so many of these settings will not appear if you're not in expert mode. So make sure you switch from simple to expert. Um, so yeah, I hope I hope that was helpful uh, to some people. Um, if not, well, you know, uh, I, I'm sure maybe some of you can give me feedback about what I'm doing. Anyway, um, that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to get back to uh, working on the Chimera Plus. So, see you guys. Bye.